I've been in prison. I went there voluntary for one year visiting people having life sentence while I was creating my newest theory performance. I am a theater director and for the last five years I have been creating theater which concentrates on social issues and social philosophy. And although I haven't been sentenced for a crime yet, well, I feel that most of my life I have been creating some kind of inner prison inside of me and not seeing it. And do you know how do they see it? I was lucky. I was in crisis. And if you are in crisis right now, it's a very important moment you're now living in. Because we are lucky if we lose a person we love, if we lose a relationship or a job, because only then we start to reevaluate our thinking, raise questions, and seeing those in a prisons, probably. And I say probably because not everyone experiences crisis. I mean, not everyone let themselves experience it. So what are these inner prisons all about? When we see a child and we watch a child for a couple of hours, we notice that he experiences all the complexity of emotions. He laughs, uh, then he falls down, starts to cry, then he wants to reach something and gets angry, then he laughs again, oh, and then he starts to cry again. It's all the complexity of emotions flowing in him. It comes and goes without really attaching to it. But while growing up, we quickly understand what emotions are wrong, negative, or so-called evil. I was always the person who doesn't feel anger. And there were situations when I was hurt, and a friend of mine told me that, well, in this situation, that would be kind of normal if you're angry. Well, but I was answering, well, you know, I am a understanding and accepting person, and I just, well, I accept it and I don't feel anger. But that was a lie. Actually, what I always was doing was the first moment I felt anger, I just put it away. Instead of experiencing it, I blocked it, because in my mind, expressing anger or experiencing anger was something that doesn't go with conscious and intellectual person. Well, but later in my life, I had to understand that unexperienced emotions, they don't go anywhere. It stays somewhere in our bodies or in subconscious, and later on, it comes back putting ourselves to painful life situations. So I went to prison because I wanted to understand why sometimes we burst in a rage. Why we do so much unsolvable things in our society. Why do we hurt another person? I went to talk to people who crossed the line and did the most immoral thing killing another person. So what I realized after having all these conversations with them for one year is that if we equate individual to society, if we see society as individual, having its own rhythm of life, brain, body parts, organs, and consciousness, then the prison would be the subconscious of it. Subconscious of society. It would be the least visible and the darkest place where we put our unwanted feelings and fears. And it's called coping mechanism. And we do have these coping mechanisms in our society as well. 
Well, we do that uh, with uncomfortable topics or embarrassing issues. During the creation process of my performance, I also interviewed not only prisoners, but also victims who have lost their relatives during criminal acts. And there were people who have lost their fathers, husbands, cousins. And I was asking them a question. Do you speak about this loss in your family? And they were answering, no. Actually, I never even, I never thought about that I could speak about this in my family. So why don't we talk? And there is another situation. I was giving a speech in one conference about social theater, about my project of prisoners. And there was a person in the audience uh, who raised a hand, uh, stood up, and complained me about choosing the topic of prisoners, saying that we are not ready to meet this negativity, and we don't want to hear about that. Well, I believe that when we don't want to hear about something, we are afraid. We are actually afraid to understand that there is pain, evil, spiritual poverty, unhappiness, uncontrolled anger in our society, and not in society, actually in ourselves, because we are the ones who created. So here is the darkness. When the lights will suddenly turn off, probably you may start thinking that there should be some kind of technical problem in the venue. Hey, is there a problem? So where's the light? Wh wh where are the emergency exits? What if something happens and we all have to go out? Oh, at least there are some blue lights on the stairs, and we are fine, we are safe. Okay, so how long are we going to stay like that? It is very unusual to expose yourself to darkness. But in reality, Trying to escape from this shadow part of yourself is always a form of self-deception. There is no way we can run from our subconscious part because it will come back and manifest itself no matter how much we resist. I want you to close your eyes now and stay here for a couple of minutes and don't think about red umbrella. Did you think about Red Umbrella? <laughs> Maybe some one of you now started to see lots of Red Umbrellas flying around in this darkness. And this is how our mind works. If you forbid something, it comes back with even stronger energy. And later on, unreleased energy becomes toxic and it surfaces in spasms, migraine headaches, tumors, and other symptoms in our physical body. And in the body of society, it may evolve into action that hurt another person. So what could we do in order to avoid all of that? I will ask for some light now. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh maybe it's more comfortable to sit in the darkness. No one sees no one's face, my face. You're going to sit freely and then think about umbrellas. Well, answering to my question, according to psychoanalysis, the straight path for healing is exposition of traumatic experiences. So that means that in order to heal, we just have to admit that there is another side of ourselves. And in the case of society, there are criminal acts, fearful thoughts, 
and anger. And here's a very simple rule for you. If you want to change something, first of all, you have to see it. There was a story one prisoner shared with me. It was a memory of him uh, when he was, he was sentenced, before he was sentenced for life. And uh, he remembers himself sitting at the bar, drinking one beer after another, and there was a telephone put on the table. He remembers that he wanted to take the phone, call somebody he loves, and tell. You are right. I need help. But he didn't do that. And later on, in the very same evening, he went out to the street and killed two people. And after sharing the story, he said that only now he understands that maybe if he had admitted at that moment that he suffers, maybe he wouldn't have done these terrible things. But he blocked his suffering, and that had unsolvable consequences. It took 10 years for him to understand that. And sometimes it takes time but following the story, I may say that admitting what you feel and where you are at the very moment may save lives. To suffer, to feel pain, to be angry, to be in crisis, it's, it's natural. It's just a very natural part of ourselves, and we have to integrate it as the other part. Let ourselves to fully experience it. And it doesn't mean that we have to be driven by emotional storm, because actually, if you are driven by emotional storm, it means that you have been denying something from yourself. And the longer you deny, the bigger is the burst. Analogically, talking about the body of society, in the same way, we are learning how to accept the other part of ourselves. In the very same way, we should accept the marginalities of society. Because there are people who have constant feeling of rejection. There is no other. It is always us circulating in the body of society as blood cells and being connected to each other more than we actually think. So the so-called evil is good. Evil is good. And actually a bit like even more, it is, it is necessary. It is requisite for our societies to move on. It helps us to reevaluate our thinking and to transform the criminal actions, and our unwanted feelings and fears, they will always exist, and we will never be able to eradicate it. But what can we do when it comes to our life? Maybe we can say, oh, hello. Welcome. And I'm still in the process of understanding my own anger and other feelings, but I believe that by accepting and hugging those shadow parts, maybe we can make our society grow and evolve it into better quality, bringing different kind of understanding of ourselves and each other. It is very important to start being in contact with our hidden parts in the prisons both in ourselves and society. And how often do you visit your prison? Thank you. <laughs>